One of the biggest problems men with pattern hair loss have to deal with is a receding frontal hairline. If this is you, one of the first things you will probably be recommended is minoxidil. But can minoxidil actually work for this kind of hair loss? Can it restore your previous hairline? Today, we'll be giving you a very clear answer and breaking down the science behind this very important topic. After watching, you'll know exactly what results to expect if you're considering or are actually already on minoxidil. Stay tuned. Just before we get started today, I highly recommend getting a copy of our new free ebook, The Ultimate Hair Regrowth System. If you're interested in the step-by-step -step system for getting thicker, healthier hair and fixing hair loss at the root, then this is a must read. Just check out the link below this video, enter your email and grab your free copy now. Hello and welcome to today's video. So the million dollar question we'll be looking at today is can minoxidil reverse frontal hair loss? Now first things first, minoxidil works best for hair loss in the crown. Same for finasteride, works best for hair loss in the crown. Now that doesn't mean that minoxidil can't work for hair loss at the front. It can, but within limits. Let me explain what I mean. So when I'm talking about complete baldness, I'm referring to your new forehead. Your forehead starts very low when you're a teenager and it keeps on getting higher and higher as your hair loss progresses. Typically, it begins to expand at the temples and it eventually forms an M pattern shape. And in advanced baldness, after the temples have moved sufficiently back, the middle also starts to recede. And then before you know it, you're in Norwood 4. So minoxidil cannot restore your forehead to what it was. But here's the thing, this balding process doesn't happen overnight. You don't go to bed one night and you wake up the next morning and the forehead has expanded. It doesn't work like that. There's stages to this process, a gradient where the hairs get progressively finer and sparser and the affected area goes from completely normal to completely miniaturized. So while a part of the scalp is going through this miniaturization process but has not yet completely miniaturized, minoxidil can help. For example, let's have a look at this photo. Now, this is moderately advanced hair loss, probably around an Orwood three to four. We can imagine in the teenage years, the hairline being something like this. Now, that's never coming back, not with all the minoxidil in the world. His new best case scenario is this. Again, he can use all the minoxidil in the world, but it's never gonna get lower than that. All the scalp below this blue line is now completely bald, and minoxidil will do more or less nothing with it. But this is the area where minoxidil can make a real difference. This area has thinned considerably and the remaining hairs are on various stages of the miniaturization process. But he still has hair there and this is where minoxidil can give the best results, halting the hair loss and increasing density. Now, as we've discussed in previous videos, about one out of two minoxidil users will see some regrowth in thinning areas. The other 50% are advised to quit after they've been using minoxidil for about four months and haven't seen any results. And for those that do get results, treatment has to continue indefinitely. As soon as the treatment stops, any new hair will fall back out. I should clarify that this 50% figure applies to minoxidil monotherapy only, so men that only use minoxidil, nothing else. Combining minoxidil with other treatments, be they topical or systemic generally gives better results. Now, what minoxidil can do for your hairline is this. By thickening the hairs that make up the hairline, it can give the impression that your hairline has gone down a bit. Cause now your hairs will grow longer, they'll be darker, they'll occupy more volume, and they'll give better coverage. In other words, they'll hide the scalp better and you can style them downwards for added effect. But that's about the limit of the hairline restoration you'll get with minoxidil. It's gonna be a bit of an illusion. Now, what I said here is not exclusive to minoxidil. It applies just the same with finasteride. Again, finasteride works best in the crown and it can also give results in the frontal area, but it cannot push back a receded hairline. Same with dutasteride, which is an even more powerful DHT blocker. It blocks about 90 plus percent of DHT in your body, but it still can't lower your forehead. So the big question is, why? Why are all these treatments so ineffective at restoring the hairline? And the answer is, nobody really knows for sure. But it probably has to do with changes that happen both in the follicles and in the tissue that surrounds them. With regards to the follicles themselves, once they've miniaturized completely, it is very, very difficult for them to grow back again. Research into this area is surprisingly limited. But what we do know is that miniaturized follicles aren't just shrunken in size. There's also quality 
qualitative changes, most notably the loss of connection between the hair follicle and the erector pili muscle. This is a tiny muscle that's attached to the follicle and it makes your hair stand out when you get goosebumps. And alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune condition that leads to completely bald patches. The hair follicles are also miniaturized, but in contrast to pattern hair loss, this miniaturization is completely reversible. And unlike pattern hair loss, the follicles in alopecia areata never lose their connection with the erector pili muscle. So a hypothesis is that this muscle might stimulate the stem cells in the follicle or actually be a source of stem cells itself so that when this connection is severed, the miniaturization might be reversible. But this is just a hypothesis at this point. But there are changes that go beyond the follicle and one of the most important ones is fibrosis. Fibrosis is the accumulation of excess collagen or microscopic scar tissue in the space surrounding the follicles. As the collagen accumulates, this makes blood circulation more and more difficult with the result that the follicles are starved of the oxygen and nutrients that they need to grow. This process of fibrosis is one of the reasons that completely bald scalp has this characteristically shiny and reflective look to it. But there's further changes that take place in balding scalp. And one of them is the so-called calcification of the blood vessels. This is literally the formation of calcium deposits on the walls of the blood vessels. This effectively shrinks their diameter and once again leads to an inadequate supply of blood. The sebaceous glands also become enlarged. These are the glands that produce the oily sebum on our scalp. As the follicles shrink, the sebaceous glands increasingly take over the space that was previously occupied by them. Now, all these changes that take place in the space between the hair follicles after a certain point are more or less irreversible, which is why it is very difficult and rare for any treatment to be able to restore parts of the scalp that have gone completely bald. A transplant is then typically the only option. Let us know, has minoxidil worked for you? Also, do you think we'll ever get a treatment that will be able to restore our teenage hairline? Thanks for watching and don't forget to grab your own free copy of the ultimate hair regrowth system in the description below. Take care.